Dressed up people can go everywhere and non-dressed up people, you can go here. This is what it says. It is Sunday, June 26th, 2022. And on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, we're talking about the dress code on Cunard. Here we are again in front of the red sofa. Last time I sat here, I think I said we were having a heat wave in Hamburg, but now we are really having a heat wave in Hamburg. It's 90 degrees here today and I love it. By the way, we don't really have air conditioning in our apartment. We're kind of lucky in the sense that we're kind of on the shady side of the building. So we get a lot of sun in the morning, but then the sun sort of passes over and there's not a lot of direct sunlight into the apartment. So it stays kind of cool in here. We do have one of these uh, air conditioning things that you kind of stick next to the window and you put the pipe out the window, but we haven't had it on yet. So, so far so good. And as you have seen, there are already a couple videos online from our experience with the Queen Mary 2, a cruise liner, an ocean liner from Cunard. I know some of you have gotten a little upset that I'm saying Cunard and not Cunard, but isn't it great that there are so many different ways to pronounce it and everybody can understand what I mean? Let me tell you something. There have been some grumpy people in the comments lately. And for all you grumpy people and all you happy people out there, we're talking about the dress code today in this video. I did this micro cruise. We just had two nights on board cruising from Southampton to back home here to my hometown of Hamburg, Germany. There's gonna be more videos coming about this, but I know that this is a topic for people. It's an issue. It was something that I was curious about. Before I cruised, I kind of looked at it from the wrong angle and some of you called me out and that was totally okay. People were saying, Morgan, if you don't want to cruise or if you don't want to wear a tuxedo on a cruise, then don't go on a cruise where you're going to need to wear a tuxedo. It's that simple. And you know what? It is that simple. And to tell you the truth, I didn't, nobody needs to wear a tuxedo. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through how it's positioned here on the Cunard website. And I also want to go through how it was worded in the daily planners that we got in the cabin. All right, so let's just jump right into the Cunard website. What I did is I just searched for Cunard dress code and it led me to this page. And this is what it looks like. It says, uh, Sea Days, Days at Sea with Cunard offer you time to explore your ship at our leisure. How you spend this time is entirely up to you. You might take a dip in the pool, if there's water in it and it's open, or relax with a book on deck. By the way, did you see in the ship tour that the, the ship has a pretty extensive library? I mean, it's nothing compared to like a library in some city on land, but compared to every other book corner I've seen on other cruise ships, this is impressive. And it was quiet. There's also any amount of daily activities to join in from fitness classes to wine tastings and arts and crafts, as well as the chance to enjoy afternoon tea between lunch and dinner. And afternoon tea was a highlight for, for me, for us. Even though I studied in London and the company that I used to work for sent me to London, uh, every year for like four or five years for some training and things like that. I've actually never done afternoon tea. So this was the first time I got to do it. Video coming about that also soon. All right, so far so good. Uh, if I scroll down here, the next, the next page here talks more in detail about the clothes itself. And like I said, I'm gonna tell you exactly how it was worded while I was on board too says here, as this time is leisurely, it's important to wear clothes that you feel comfortable in. Shorts and t-shirts are perfectly acceptable and we'd encourage you to bring swimwear so you can enjoy the pools if they're open. I keep making that joke because there are, I think, three pools on board and only one of them had water in it on our cruise. It was no problem for me because I would had no time to go in the pool anyways. Just something I'm pointing out. So uh, we'd encourage you to bring swimwear so you can enjoy the pool, spa, and whirlpools on your ship. If you want to use the gym, join an exercise class, or run a mile around the deck, ensure you pack a pair of trainers and whatever you normally wear to work out. Now we're getting to where they talk about some of these uh, restrictions. Swimwear isn't permitted in indoor dining areas. So if you're planning to visit your stateroom's main restaurant for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, be sure to factor in time for a quick change in your stateroom and 
honestly, I'm fine with people not going to the restaurant in in a wet swimsuit. I, I kind of think that's, that's, you know, how it should be. When I think of the outdoor dining venues on Carnival, there's usually always the Blue Iguana Taco Restaurant, fantastic Tex-Mex style Mexican food. Also, Guy's Burgers. Those are outdoor dining venues next to the pool. So yeah, wear your swimsuit there, that's fine. But I feel like as soon as you're going indoors to eat on a cruise ship, and especially in the main dining room. Don't wear your swimsuit. Continuing here, alternatively, Alternatively, why couldn't I say that? Alternatively, enjoy complimentary room service or a drink brought to you on your sun lounger as you while away the hours at sea. And they have a nice little display of people over here wearing different outfits. So they're just some ideas. Does anybody like look at this and then go shopping? Maybe. Scrolling down a little bit here to perhaps the thing that's gonna be a more big deal for some people. Evenings on board. It says here, evenings on board, a Cunard or Cunard queen exude a sense of occasion, but they're also as relaxed as you want them to be. There's no need to dress to the nines each night if you don't want to. That's probably, that phrase is a game changer for a lot of people and I know that this has changed recently in the onboard culture on these ships. So there's no need to dress to the nines each night if you don't want to and you'll find many areas on board where casual dress is welcome. So that is also an important phrase. The strict dress code is still enforced, but it's separated in areas on the ship. We're gonna get into that here. It says, if you do want to make an effort in the evening, you won't be alone. The majority of guests traveling with us embrace the chance to switch to smart attire by night. This doesn't mean you'll be expected to wear a gown or dinner jacket each evening. Smart attire simply means a dress shirt and trousers, skirt and a top, or a cocktail dress. Oh. I had to set a reminder because I'm premiering the ship tour video and I wanna be there in the comments, so I gotta hurry up. Essentially, choose something along the same vein as you'd wear to a stylish restaurant or the theater on a special occasion. There's a couple examples over here. I think this one guy is even wearing, yeah, he's wearing a t-shirt, some pants, some dress shoes, and, or is that like a sweater? At least what I'm trying to say is he's wearing a jacket, but not a collared shirt. And uh, the other guy here is wearing a collared shirt with no tie. We've got sort of a sassy pant suit down here. And I don't know, what would you call that? That's a dress, isn't it? Or a skirt suit? Not, uh, not the expert on women's fashion here. Sorry about that. Moving on to the gala night or gala night. However you say it is fine with me. I hope how I say it is fine with you, which is more of a big deal. Let me get into it here. It says at least twice on each seven night voyage, we'll host a gala evening where we do ask that you observe a black tie dress code. Again, it's your choice whether you participate in these evenings or not. Many of our guests choose to sail with us specifically because they look forward to these events. I'm not one of them. But there are those people and, and you are all welcome to it. Gala evenings follow one of a few themes with voyages of seven nights or more offering a chance to attend more than one. You'll find many nods to these themes throughout the ship so you'll want a wardrobe to match. Click below for advice whether you want to put on a show or give the theme a more subtle nod with an embellishment or accessory, the choice is yours. I'm not gonna get into the theme ideas, but if we look at these examples over here, we have two of the women's photos here are quite fancy, quite elegant. This is not something that I think most women, at least most women that I know and hang around with would wear on a weekly basis at home. So this is something very special. There's a guy in a tuxedo, of course. I don't know anybody who goes out in a tuxedo every week here, unless it's part of their job. The guy here in the middle on the bottom is wearing a suit with a tie and a dark pant and some dress shoes. And then we also have another sassy, uh, sporty pantsuit for this woman over here. As far as what we wore, 
Marcus and I wore a suit with a shirt and a suit with a shirt and tie each night. Um, if you are looking forward to see photos of Marcus and I in our suits and ties, I'm gonna have to disappoint you there. If you look closely, you'll see Marcus in his, but you ain't gonna see me in mine. The reason for that is I did not wear a hat on board and I felt fine walking around with no hat at that time, but I saw what it looked like on camera and I'm not happy yet. We are moving along with project hair up here, but I'm just not ready yet. It's coming. There are some more dress suggestions uh, down below here. It talks about what to bring for shore days, what to bring for uh, destinations, uh, Alaska, the Mediterranean, for example. I think these are just kind of suggestions. There are, I'm pretty sure they're not gonna say you can't go on this excursion unless you're wearing a pantsuit or something like that. It's not like that. But now, I think what is listed in these daily planners that we got delivered to the cabin is a little bit more specific and a little bit more, it will help you more expect and prepare for your cruise on a Cunard ship. And I'm gonna read these to you right after this commercial break. Did you get one? What was it about? Write it in the comments below if you wanna. As I said, we had a two night cruise. Not, this does not make me an expert at what it's like to cruise with the Queen Mary or Cunard. Just going through the website here, going through the things that we got delivered and telling you about what I also saw on board. All right, so on the night that we had the gala evening or the gala evening on board, this is what was listed. This is what the daily program looks like, by the way. What you get delivered to the cabin. It says here, it's showtime. Tonight, we invite you to dress to impress and celebrate with us at one of our much anticipated gala evenings. That means from 6 p.m. on board, so there is a certain time where this begins, it's dinner jacket, tuxedo, or dark suit for the men with a regular tie or a bow tie evening or cocktail dress, smart trouser suit, or formal separates for the ladies, please. A range of gentlemen's formal wear is available to hire on board. That means they will even rent you a tuxedo or a jacket. The next paragraph is where it kind of tells you where you are allowed to go if you're not wearing a tuxedo. And I, I think this is interesting, this sort of separation of, Dressed up people can go everywhere and non-dressed up people, you can go here. This is what it says. If you prefer to spend tonight in more relaxed attire, feel free to dress more casually in the following venues. King's Court, which is the buffet restaurant. Golden Lion, which is the pub, and they also serve food there. The Casino, the Corinthia Lounge, which is like a, a cocktail bar where they do also trivia and things like that. And G32, which is the nightclub, yeah. I was shocked. I didn't realize that there was going to be a nightclub, a disco, a dance club on the Queen Mary 2. I didn't think that fit with the brand, but there was. It had pretty cool sound and light package. Nothing close to like it was on Virgin Voyages, but it's there. And there was a little bit of a cool atmosphere on the one night. Okay, another specification here that is not uh, listed in, or was not listed on the website. It says, please note, non-ripped jeans are appropriate, but please refrain from wearing shorts, sports attire, swimwear, or sleeveless t-shirts outside of the gym, spa, and deck spaces. And this is a little bit different than what it says for the other night we were on board, even though the other night wasn't a gala night. And before I get to mention it, uh, before I forget to mention it, we did go to gala night, we did get dressed up, uh, we did see people who were very dressed up. Not only people wearing like men in tuxedos, but even in tuxedos with like, I don't know, what do you, were they maybe like medals from, they were knights or something. I don't know. We saw people like really seriously dressed up as if they were going to the Kennedy Center Honors or something like that. Women also in full regalia with updos, with pearls, with the whole shebang happening. There were, there were quite a few gentlemen as well wearing suits and ties like uh, Marcus and I were wearing. And we did, on gala night, we went to eat in the buffet actually. And we did see one dude in the buffet dressed like he just came from the gym. 
according to this, he sh he technically wouldn't be allowed in there, um, but he was there, so you know it is what it is. All right, let me read to you the second the second one, and this one is in German. We got one in German and one in English. If you don't know, I live in Germany. I've lived here for 20, almost 25 years now. I speak German all day, every day. Like almost literally the only time I sit down and speak English is to talk to you. So let me go through this. I'm going to translate it for you. It says, um, tonight is elegant, uh, elegant attire or smart attire. Uh, starts at 18, well, starts at 6 o'clock on the entire ship. So it's worded differently than the other one. Let me read through it quickly in German here. Für den Herren ein Kragenhemd, Krawatte, optional, jacket oder lange Hose. So it says, for the men, a shirt with a collar, tie is optional. Nice to know. A jacket and long pants. It says here specifically, jeans are not welcome. So that's different than gala night, but I think it's because, you know, on gala night, it's like you have to have a suit or a tuxedo. And this is just saying we want everybody to be dressed up, but jeans not happening. It says here, for the ladies, a cocktail dress, a pant suit, or a blouse with a skirt. Jeans are also not welcome. Then it goes on to say, when sie abends lockere Kleidung bevorzugen, sind sie recht herzlich. Then the wording continues here, pretty much same to what was in the other one, saying, if you want to go out in more comfortable clothing, then you are uh, you are very welcome to visit the King's Court Buffet, the Golden Lion Pub, the Casino, the Corinthia Lounge, and G32, which is the disco. It says here, please be aware that jeans in these rooms are welcome or are, are uh, allowed. However, we do ask you, do not wear any shorts, sport clothes or swimsuits or t-shirts with no arms unless you're going to the gym, the spa, or the outer decks. So that pretty much boils it down. Like I said, Marcus and I, we both brought just one jacket, wore the same jacket both nights. We changed, uh, changed up the shirts. One night, shirt with no tie. Other night, shirt with a tie. Both wear, wore dark pants with dress shoes and we felt fine. It was way more comfortable than wearing a tuxedo. There, I know there are people who love to get dressed up, who love to get dolled up. Hold on, I have to look at the time. Okay, good, I have 10 minutes left. And so I guess f for the women, if you have one or two sort of a dress up looks, you can just sort of interchange them. And another thing that we did and we saw happening is, after a certain time at night, everybody just kind of gets relaxed about it anyways. And after, basically after dinner and after the final show performance in the theater, we did see people starting to show up like in the entire area of the ship again, wearing more relaxed clothes. And especially the latest thing to happen is everybody goes to the nightclub at the end of the night and there it's kind of, anything goes as long as it's not shorts and ripped up jeans. So that's, uh, that's kind of how it is if you're a guy and you have one sport coat, one jacket, one blazer, whatever you want to call it, a pair of dress pants, maybe one or two different pairs of dress pants, dress pants, one or two shirts, a tie for a short cruise, you're going to be fine. And of course you can accessorize all those things to sort of mix it up. And honestly, it's not like somebody's walking around is gonna say, um, excuse me, but haven't you worn that dress already on this cruise? And if they do, excuse me? All right, now that you know that, are, are you more or less apt to want to cruise with Cunard than you, yeah, than you were before seeing this. I know been getting a lot of interesting comments about the shape of the ship, that it's, uh, the ship definitely needs some time to be lifted, pimped, and plucked. She is tired. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And speaking of comments, now will come the time on Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live on air. Usually on this section, I go through the comments of last week's Sunday Sofa Time to answer questions, to just sort of look at what's there and let you know what everybody is saying. It's kind of just a mishmash. I don't really have a plan when I do it. This week, I wanna take a look at some of the comments on the video tour of the cabin that we were in. And the first one is from Lutz Christ or Lutz 
Christ. And this is something that I was really interested to read and I definitely want you to know this too. Lutz writes, the reason for the rusty look is the QM2 is indeed a true ocean liner, whereas cruise ships are mostly staying in port during the day and are moving a little bit during night. The crew has plenty of time during the day to paint and get rid of even small rust spots, but not with the QM2. During the transatlantic season, she is traveling back and forth and stays in port for only eight hours every eight days. Plus, the harsh, con harsh conditions of the North Atlantic, which make even a brand new ship look rusty after a few weeks. There's no chance for the crew to fix it. And this is something that I didn't even think about. The Queen Mary is just doing all these transatlantics back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And just like Lutz says, they have so much less time when it's in port to do these little cosmetic things on the outside of the ship. So that's definitely something to consider and something to know. On the other hand, when they're charging sort of a premium price to cruise with the ship, I feel like then they need to maybe every few weeks stay in port for an extra day or two days to just kind of take care of these things because, you know, for the price, I still expect more even after knowing this information, which is a, a really good explanation actually. Next comment is from Mary or Marie Brooks. She writes, that looks like a cove balcony on other ships. I love a cove balcony. It's spacious and protects from the sun, yet it, it does get wet if the waves are high. Nice cabin overall though, pricey. Yeah, we stayed in what, Q I was gonna call it carnival, I mean, Cunard is carnival, but they call it a sheltered balcony. So if you watch the balcony tour, you'll see exactly what it's like, but it is a little bit more closed off. It feels more like having an outdoor space on the cabin than a balcony. Like on the floor we were on deck five, when we were laying on the bed, we couldn't see the ocean. And on many, many other cruise ships, if you have a balcony, you can see the ocean from the bed. You can because it's it's glass, you know? But there are other ships, including Disney ships, uh, including also Carnival ships I know, that have balconies like this. There's advantages and disadvantages, and I would have no problem booking a cabin like this again, and uh, Marie likes them too. Final comment is from Dennis Neumann. Dennis writes, the QM2 is definitely a ship that I would like to experience one day. I just need to lose some a lot of weight to fit into my formal clothes again and oh my let me give you a little piece of advice over the past two years we spent a lot of time at home and a lot of our bodies have changed a little bit so if you have something coming up something formal coming up and you're thinking all right i'm gonna wear that suit i'm gonna wear that dress or whatever girl you need to try it on right now before that night because miraculously a lot of my clothes especially my fancy clothes they shrunk in the closet over the past two years i don't understand it dennis writes i know that with the labor shortages some of these small things can be overlooked so on the last cruise i was on i left a note for the steward at the end of the cruise with what i found for example the rubber gasket was missing from the plug in the tub so it didn't hold water. I did the same with the last hotel I stayed in for a couple of nights. Some of the things I pointed out in the cabin, people were writing, you should have talked to the cabin steward about this, but I, I didn't because I thought these things are obvious. The cabin steward will have seen them already. He will have heard this squeaky closet door. He will have seen how dirty the sofa is. Me pointing it out to him, if, if it hasn't been fixed already, me pointing it out to him, I, I feel like it's not gonna fix anything anyway, so I didn't. But this is also a way that it could be done. I wonder what happens with those notes. I wonder if the stewards, or you know, if the steward who read this uh, note that Dennis wrote uh, took it to heart, or if he tossed it away. Who knows? All right, I'm gonna wrap this up here and head back to the office here to join you in the comments for the premiere of the ship tour. Thank you for hanging out here if you did this on Sunday or whatever day it was. And I look forward to seeing you next week here in front of the red sofa. Bye-bye.